Howdy everyone, I'm Michael Perch, a professor at the University of Texas at Austin, and I record all of my lectures. In fact, I share all of my educational content to support working professionals and, most importantly, to support my students with evergreen content that outlasts the semester. I have been developing about 50 interactive Python demonstrations, dashboards, that allow my students to be able to play with systems and learn complicated concepts from machine learning, data analytics, data science in general. So I'm recording this series to walk through these interactive dashboards. Now, in the previous interactivity, I talked about correlation coefficients. In this one, I want to dive into what happens when you have outliers. And if you want to follow along, you can go to my GitHub account. In my GitHub account, I have many repositories, including Python numerical demos, if you go down, here's all the interactivities, and there is a correlation coefficient issues. Open that up, download it, open it up, and you'll be fine to go. To run it locally, you'll just need to install Anaconda. It's a Jupyter Notebook. Should be pretty straightforward. When you open it up, go ahead and do a kernel, restart, and run all. Let's go ahead and do that. Now we'll all be on the same footing. And what I'll do right now is I'll go back up to the top, and I'll walk through just some basic concepts so that we're together on this demonstration. Now, if you want more details, the theory, well, go ahead and click on these links. You'll get complete lectures on correlation analysis, univariate statistics, principal components, and so forth. There's a lot of different lectures. Go to my YouTube channel. You'll see many of them. Let's talk about the basic prerequisites. Bivariate analysis. We're trying to understand the relationship between bivariate two features at a time. Yeah, an example would be the porosity and permeability relationship if we're dealing with fluids, flow in a porous media. Nickel and copper grade, how are they related to each other? That could be the case for mineral mining. What are we trying to do? If we quantify and model bivariate relationships, we then capture them. Now, what if we just didn't, we ignored the relationships and we dealt with them independently? You'd have no relationship beyond the constraints at data. Away from the data, it'd become independent of each other. And that would result in non-physical results. Rock with high permeability, but very low porosity, or rock with very, very low copper, but very, very high nickel when they may often have relationships with each other. Okay. How are we going to quantify bivariate relationships, two features at a time? We can use the correlation coefficient. The complete name is the Pearson Product Moment Correlation Coefficient. It is a measure of the degree of linear relationship, but we're going to keep calling it correlation coefficient for short. How do we get to the calculation? Let's start with the variance. Everybody look right here. We got the regular sample variance. We're taking the sum divided by n minus 1, n minus 1 degrees of freedom. But if you just imagine n, this becomes an average. And what are we averaging? The square difference between sample values and their mean. OK, so that's a good measure of dispersion, the average squared departure or difference from the mean. Now, if you take that square term and you expand it and you replace one of them with another feature, now what you have is the covariance, which is a measure of how x and y, x and y, vary together. In other words, if you look at this calculation, if you had a very high x value and a very large y value paired together, the product would be a very large contribution to the sum. If you had a very low x value, very low y value, that'd be a large negative, large negative becomes a positive. That's a large contribution to the covariance. So when things vary together, in other words, high and highs and lows and lows are paired, you get a high covariance. And when it's all mixed up, they'll kind of cancel out. You get negative and positive terms and they'll kind of may tend towards zero. Now, if you take the covariance measure, which we got from the variance, and we just standardize it by the standard deviation of x times y, you get a convenient measure. That's the Pearson product moment correlation coefficient, the correlation coefficient right here, represented by rho. And it goes from negative 1 to 1. Under the assumption of bivariate Gaussianity, we can make the following interpretations of the correlation coefficient. One is a perfect positive linear relationship. Like imagine a line like that between x and y. Zero would be no relationship. Imagine just a like a shotgun blast of points. 
and negative one will be a perfect negative relationship like that. Okay, now in summary, we can summarize the relationship be between the covariance and the correlation coefficient based on this standardization shown, shown right here. What's the impact of if we have outliers, because that's what I want to talk about today. What if we have outliers and we do a correlation coefficient calculation? Well, let's just say it right now. Very, very sensitive to outliers. In fact, that sensitivity is noted as such an issue that it's motivated another form of correlation. The Spearman rank correlation coefficient. Now, look at this equation. And I, I suspect that you have deja vu at this moment. It should look exactly like the previous Pearson product moment correlation coefficient shown right here. The only difference is we substitute it for all the x's, we put rx, and for all the y's we put ry. What is r? r is the rank transform. We take all of the x values, we sort them in ascending order, and then we substitute instead of the data values xi, the rank xi is going to be its ith value, its rank. So the very lowest value will be called 1, and the very highest value will get the rank n. So we've sorted the data, we've replaced the values with the ranks. And we do that independently for x and y. We're not doing this paired in any way, so it's very simple. We just sort each list independently. Why do we use the Spearman rank over the Pearson product moment correlation coefficient? It's better with outliers. It's much more robust. And it can also deal with monotonic non-linearity. That would imagine something like that or something like that. It's non-linear, but it's constantly rising or it could be constantly falling, but it would not do well with this, okay, where we have both rising and falling. Imagine like a parabola. This is not going to correct for that. All right, we're going to demonstrate the impact of outliers here. We're going to talk about that, but we could have also talked about the monotonic nonlinearity. All right, so let's go ahead and just mention, I, I, I mentioned the equations. I want to show it to you what exactly a rank transform looks like. Here's x1, x2, two features, bivariate analysis. We just do a scatter plot, look at the data. We have 500 data right here. And we added one data value that's an outlier, the red value right there. Now, if I perform the rank transform, we go from 1 all the way to 500. That's the rank transform in x1 and x2. You can see how the data is bounded there. And then this large, large outlier just becomes 501 in both x1 and x2. And it's right there. You see how it tucks it in? That's what the rank correlation coefficient sees when it looks at the data and performs the correlation analysis. Okay, so I hope that helps explain how outliers are mitigated with the rank correlation coefficient. Okay, let's get started. To run all of this, you just need to have Anaconda, the most current version installed. We'll keep these workflows up to date. Let's go ahead and load some libraries. We've got these libraries already loaded, ready to go. We're going to declare a function. This function just puts some nice grid lines into the plots. I don't like doing that every time. And then we got some code here. I'm not going to talk about the code. No. This is all to build the dashboard. It's got some interesting options and so forth. Let's go right to the dashboard. I'm going to zoom out so the dashboard fits nicely. Now we can see our dashboard right there. What have we done? We're going to increase the number of samples to 1,000. We have a correlation coefficient of zero, and now we can control the location in log transform space of the outlier. Now, if you look here, you're going to see that this is log, this is log. We're using log log scale. Now, the reason we're doing that is I want to demonstrate the impact of an outlier. So I want to be able to have extreme outliers. You see this is 10, this is 100, this is 1,000. By the time I'm out here, it's a very extreme outlier. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and just demonstrate a couple of things. We got the correlation coefficient shown right here, but it's zero. Within error, it's zero. And the rank correlation coefficient also within error, it's zero. Let's go ahead and change the correlation of all of our red points. The outlier that we're putting in is just right in the middle at 10, 10. It's in the middle of that distribution. So we go ahead and we go 0.1.
Now look at the regular correlation coefficient, the rank correlation coefficient, 0 0.114, 0 0.099. They're really, I bet if we were to bootstrap this, they're probably within error of each other. 0 0.2, the same thing. 0.3, the same thing. So in general, the two correlation measures are really very close to each other. Same thing there. We go ahead and we have a correlation coefficient of 0.6. Now it's getting pretty serious. 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, and so forth. Now, if you noticed any type of pattern of the rank correlation coefficient always being just a little bit less than the correlation coefficient, that's not a good observation. What's actually happening here is we set the random number seed. And so what I suspect is that the configuration of the data we're getting each time just happens to have a certain type of pattern that results in that general difference. Run this many times, bootstrap it, and I bet you'll see that the distributions don't have a bias. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume my hypothesis is there's no reason to believe rank would be lower than the regular Pearson product moment. Okay, and one. Everybody see the performance now, they're just both one. They're measuring the perfect linear relationship between x1 and x2. Okay, and if we go all the way back down to zero, we could repeat the same process for negative correlations. And no surprises, now we have that relationship right there. Okay, I don't even need to show it, but I'm gonna show it. Now, don't be disturbed by this. Do you see this kind of nonlinear behavior? What's causing that? We're in log log space. And so we'd expect that there is going to be a little bit of a stretching out of the difference between small values and shrinking the difference between large values. And so now we're seeing that sh stretching out and shrinking effect here causing this type of curve. Don't worry, it is linear in regular space. Let's go back to zero correlation. Now, you see we've got a zero correlation between x1 and x2 for, for Pearson product moment and for the rank at the same time. Let's go ahead and move the outlier around. We're going to take and we're going to move it along. Do you see that one little outlier? I gave it a really distinct symbol so we can see it. Let's look. Is there any effect as we move it over here? It's That's a big outlier now. The data is tending to be between what? Like 8 and 13 or something like that. And, and look, you can see that in fact, it has no impact. We still have zero correlation. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start moving that outlier up. Watch what happens to the correlation coefficient and the rank correlation coefficient. We're moving it up. Look at the correlation coefficient. Look at the rank. You see? Correlation coefficient 0.2. Rank is still 0. 0 0.3. 0 0.4. Do you see what's happening here? As we move that value up further, now remember, there's a thousand uncorrelated data values and we just have one extreme outlier two orders of magnitude higher, in fact, than all the other data. And we've already gotten up to a correlation coefficient of about 0.99. Like, this is incredible. Now, the rank correlation coefficient, it says, nope, I'm not deceived. It took, in the rank transform, and tucked that data point right into here. It's probably showing up right about there after rank transform. Okay, so this is a really nice demonstration of what happens if we have an extreme outlier and uncorrelated data. We've inflated the correlation coefficient, but the rank correlation coefficient, it saw through it. It was okay with the outlier. Let's go ahead and now add a strong degree of correlation between x1 and x2. Okay, so Pearson and rank correlation coefficient, they say, yep, that's perfect linear relationship. I'm giving it a 1. That's fine. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start moving that outlier around. What do you think is going to happen? What's your hypothesis? Let's go ahead. Move that outlier over. Okay, look at that. A little bit of change. Keep moving it. Look what's happening. Now we're down to a 0 0.95, 0 0.90. 0.8 for the Pearson product moment correlation coefficient. The rank correlation coefficient says, mm, I don't what I don't see an outlier. I don't see anything going on. The rank transforms tucking it back in again. Okay, so here we go. Keep going, keep going, keep going. And if we go all the way over here, look at that. Zero correlation. You see that 1,000 data with a perfect linear relationship, one outlier, almost two orders of magnitude larger than the 1,000 data, and it has knocked our correlation coefficient down to almost zero.
But the rank correlation coefficient says I'm fine. I'm still basically one. I tuck that in, that outlier is not causing me any troubles at all. Now, just in case you're wondering, there's something magic about X1 versus X2. Nah, we go ahead and put that back and we'll go ahead and just move it up and look at the result. We're gonna see the same result again if we move up in x2, make an outlier in x2, not in x1. You see how we're getting the correlation coefficient? It's approaching zero again. Okay, and now what if we go ahead and make an outlier in both? No surprises, right? It, it's, it's still seeing a, a one correlation coefficient. In fact, if we change the correlation back here to be zero again, still basically one correlation for the Pearson product moment correlation coefficient. But now the rank correlation coefficient is correcting again. You can make that zero or negative. And look at that. Look at that. That now that. Check that out. That's incredible. Pearson product moment correlation coefficient one. Perfect linear correlation? No, I don't think so. But look at what the rank says. No, I see that as being a, almost a perfect negative correlation. Remember that curve there is just caused by the log log scale. It really is in regular space, just a negative slope line. Okay, I hope this was beneficial to you. I think it's always a good idea to play with our systems and learn about them. And what a great thing to do is play with the Pearson product moment correlation coefficient and the Spearman rank correlation coefficient, understand the impact of outliers. I hope this was a useful demonstration to you. You have the code, you're welcome to go ahead and try it out. I am, once again, Michael Perch. I'm a professor at the University of Texas at Austin, and I share all of my educational content online to support my students and to support working professionals. All right, everyone stay safe. Thank you.